I do want to do a follow up, which was for that same lecture. Uh, what we're going to watch is the uh, the question that he asks at the end. We're going to watch the uh, the um, we're going to watch like the last minute of the lecture itself. He might have been heckling even that a little bit. You know, he he tended to do that. You know, boundary issues. But uh, but uh, but then he he asked the first question at the end, and and I think you can see in the first question. I mean, it's not just that like you know this is like a funny and charismatic guy with a podcast but i mean like he actually did have some some real insights to uh, to bring to bear on this stuff so let's uh, let's watch that second clip this is a little bit off track but what i'm confused by and as you say he's not argumentation and coherence is in his thing but when you there's a really interesting contradiction in his work and i wonder if yeah. maybe there's a way of picking out fans in either of these two directions although it might not necessarily help us sure. with a left perspective, but it seems to me that, like, on one hand, if you're obsessed with a certain type of social cohesion as represented by, like, monogamy mm -hmm. and traditional family arrangements and stuff like that, there is a kind of more of this in the UK, basically, but there are these, like, Catholic conservatives who, oh, yeah. unlike people in the United States, are actually willing to say, like, markets need to be regulated because we actually recognize that unlimited capital flow and deregulation is going to necessarily, like, and this is a tense thing for us on the left, right? Because sure. some of these social advances that are correct and a benefit of capitalism, but let's be real, like they're not happening because people are protesting, yeah. they're happening because like because the market demands that more people be in the workforce, that there more be, you know, liquid movement and capital and services and people. Yeah. So that's, and then that's why on the flip side, someone like, you know, Zygmunt Bauman, who's a really good old school Marxist, yeah. can write some critiques of this stuff that conservatives cannot add, like, yeah, he's right, there's sure. no community, there's no, so, Okay, so there's one part that he's appealing to with that stuff. And then it's like, if he had an actual project, then he would be a sort of right-wing critic of capitalism. But then he does, he's like, okay, well, everything's disrupted, we're not coherent, we're not in community anymore, and we're not traditional, so what you need to do is show up, to, like, I'll be snarky for a second. Yeah. We did a whole segment once on how, like, you know, it's like, well, you know, if you look at the DNA helix, it's really like, you know, it's, it's young talked about this and, and then, which is why you should, you should show up five minutes early for work. <laughs> like everything is actually just like, here's how you compete better yeah. in a system which actually will never, ever, ever lend itself or uh, support the maintenance of structure he wants. Yeah, so that that clip uh, started a little bit later than I thought it did, but I think it's good. I think that I think you got the complete thought there, um, and you know, and I think some of the the complexity that he's talking about that, like, um, you know, I think oftentimes on the left uh, to make it easier for ourselves, right? We sort of treat it as if all the things that we don't like always go together uh, in this really straightforward way, right? Which is just not true right it made like sometimes uh the you know imperatives of capital accumulation actually lend themselves to support social progress right because it's it's like easier to um you know it's like more efficient you know if if you uh if you're you're allowed to have the you know the best person for the you know in the um as vice president in charge of blood sucking at Goldman Sachs, you know, because said like you know you don't have to like fire them because they're gay or something right that uh um but then, you know, that he asked this really interesting question about conservatism and like the way that um, somebody like Peterson's project is ultimately just kind of incoherent, right? You know, there's there's no there's no solution built into it. And, you know, the discussion after that, you know, kind of gets into how like what we kind of say to that that kind of conservative, um, you know, from the left, right, which I think ultimately you know what i kind of said response and like you know and, and michael sort of uh fleshes this out in uh in his book against the web um is um uh, is you know after you know a couple of years after that of of discussing this uh this stuff a lot you know which is that i think we can kind of say that okay look uh <laughs> if you want to like go back to the 50s and force people into those roles then we we just have a disagreement right i mean we we, we don't uh you know, like, like then we'll have to fight about it. But, um, 
But we'll point out that capitalism being the way that it is, uh, people don't really get to pick um, what they're going to do with their lives, right? You know, they're all economic pressures that, you know, that sort of, on the one hand, like, make it hard, you know, on the one hand, might make it hard to keep together relationships, for example, you know, that, like, make, might pay, make people move around. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, might actually force people to stay in bad relationships, you know, because they can't afford to strike out on their own. And that under socialism, you know, you could have, um, you know, you could have like under conditions of, of meaningful economic equality. You, know, you could have like a real range of options, right? You know, you want to have like a super traditional family and everybody goes to church all the time, go nuts, have fun with that, right? You know, the, uh, you want to live in a polyamorous Wiccan commune, you know, that's fine. You could do that too, right? You know, but the like everybody is ideally freed from the sort of, you know, financial constraints that stop them, you know, from being able to get however they want to live. So, you know, they might not, uh, the sort of, you know, crunchy uh, British conservative he's talking about, you know, might not get everything they want, you know, because uh, they can't force anybody else to play along, you know, but, uh, but, you know, you can at least acknowledge that there's, um, and there, there, there might be something to work with in terms of like left outreach and like pointed out to that person that the things that they want don't actually go together. They kind of have to choose. Right, you know, do you you know, do you want even the possibility of the social cohesion, even voluntarily, or you know, do you want unrestrained free markets? You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument to access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns. All of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>